What it do, YouTube? It's your boy Toxic Reacts, and I'm back with another video. So today we have Uber Drive response in a defense against angry boyfriend. So I guess you know some dude going crazy on the Uber driver, and that's another like Uber driving. I don't know if I can do that, man. I'm gonna do that unless I have a gun, <laughs> like no cap, like bro. You don't. That's too many strangers getting in and out your car. Motherfuckers don't know. Y'all don't know who is who, bro. That's like. That's it's you can't even tell me it's the same as going to a building full of fast food. That's like getting your personal car, he right behind you, or he probably right next to you. You don't know if, what they got on, what happened, what going on through their day. You just don't know. And that just ain't it. That's like the same thing about me trying to do DoorDash. I'm like, bro, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to do DoorDash? Because if I walk onto a new door, he's like, I ain't just a bad mood, snatch the food out of my hand. Bitch, I hope you get coronavirus. <laughs> All right, into the video. The legal standard is very clear. If you have a reasonable belief that your life is in imminent danger, you can use deadly force to protect yourself. Want to take your knowledge beyond the narrated videos? Join us on Active Self Protection Extra and subscribe. So, I thought how the law works if the cops feel that you needed to use self-defense you can explain all you want but at the end of the day the cops gotta investigate and if they feel like you did not have the need if you didn't if they feel like you didn't need to use self-defense they can like you up for a fucking manslaughter murder so it's like hmm 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 mm -hmm. back to the video subscribe for multiple videos every week to help you get better in your defensive skills Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Winter Haven, Florida in the United States. Here we're going to see an Uber driver who is going to be threatened with deadly force by a man and he's going to take appropriate action to protect himself. Now I'm going to say there's a ton of backstory here, so I want you to go and hit the links in the description. I've got stuff there on news stories, a press conference with the Polk County Sheriff, all kinds of additional information that is important in this one, so make sure you hit those. Most likely, you gonna tell me. Or you probably just gonna bring out a video, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, I don't care. I'm here for you. I'm here for this video. <laughs> then let's watch what's going on. The audio here is super important, so we're gonna listen in. But understand, this guy who's about to come in and be the aggressor thinks that his drunk girlfriend is in this Uber. She is actually not, but he thinks she is, and so he is angry and has told other patrons that he is going to whip this Uber driver because he's angry at him for taking his girlfriend out of there. Let's listen in, and then we'll come back and learn some lessons. See what I mean? Like, like, why? Like, all it takes is somebody just be under the, under the influence of something, bro. Crack, cocaine, drunk. Like, it don't matter. They, <laughs> like, why the fuck are you stopping in the middle of the road, bro? Like, where the police? I always be saying that when I see somebody break the law and I got a ticket for it. I'm like, where the police when this motherfucker did it? Motherfucker go through the stop sign. Where the police in? Huh? Where the police when this nigga going 80 miles per hour next to me? Huh? Like, fuck y'all, man. Y'all ain't want to do it. See, y'all went. Fuck it. Fuck it. I got caught. Damn, fuck it. I'll just keep it on the chain. I got caught. I'll say something. You want my pistol? You want me to shoot you? Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, my God. I'll just shoot you. I'll say something. You want my pistol? You want me to shoot you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'll just shoot you. I need to shoot you. Bro, you had a gun in his hand. You had a gun in your hand. If I got a gun on me and you got your gun out, I can say that's self-defense, right? Yes or no? I felt threatened. He had his gun out. Why you got your gun out? We didn't need it. Yeah, self-defense. He only had a split second to decide what the right thing to do was to protect himself and his passenger. If you appreciate the lessons that you get here at Active Self Protection, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss a lesson. Out of this particular one, there are a bunch of lessons that we can talk about, but I want to focus on a couple here. Number one, I want to talk about carrying your tools on your person 
even if that goes against company policy and if that's a wise decision for you. Secondly, I want to talk about a reasonable belief of a threat of deadly force and how you can act in those instances. I also want to talk about the importance. What is a reasonable belief? Well, the dude drove on the opposite side of the lane, which is illegal. Okay, so he broke one law. Okay, let's get that out the way. Then he pulls in front of the dude, stops, impeding traffic, another one, pulls out a gun, exposing your weapon when it's not needed. That's an, uh, another one. And then, well, shit. They, I did hear a female in there. So, I don't know what could happen after that. I don't know. Like... After that one, let's see, I'll break it down. Of defensive marksmanship. This man is a CWP holder and has apparently recently passed the uh, police officer's academy in the state of Florida. So that's great. It's not against the law for him to be carrying, although it is against the company policy of Uber to have drivers armed. You always have to decide, wait a minute, is this company policy that's not a legal issue something I'm going to abide by? And this man is grateful in this moment that he didn't abide by that policy, but recognize he could face sanctions from his employer for that. They might fire him. You know, Uber may decide to drop him or whatever. I hope they don't, though, because clearly this man needed to be armed in this moment. So you got to decide that for yourself as well. Now, let's think about a bunch of other stuff here. This guy comes in and, and cuts him off. Our Uber driver honked at him. Now, of course, your horn is to warn other drivers of things they may have missed. It's not a retaliatory device. I see it in a lot of parts of the United States that people use their horn to punish others and to tell them that they're idiots. I don't recommend that. And the reason that I don't recommend that is because it can inflame road rage. Of course, the guy in the truck is 100% responsible for all this road rage. However, we have to do what we can do to de-escalate, escape, and evade. And, and I think de-escalating conflict means not laying on the horn on somebody. Again, it's not his fault that this guy's an idiot, and, and it's not going to stop him from doing what he's going to do. Now, this is a case that the Polk County Sheriff has clearly said is a, you know, a classic example of standing your ground. This guy is in a place he has the legal right to be. He has no duty to retreat in the state of Florida. And I don't think that we should have a duty to retreat anywhere. There's only about 14 states left in the United States where they impose any duty to retreat. And Florida is not one of them, thankfully. However, that said, would it have been a smarter thing in that moment to hit reverse and use the car to get out of there? Maybe. Now, of course, the guy would have gotten back in the truck, could have just escalated the conflict in another place. But sometimes your vehicle is the best solution. And so I'd encourage you to think about using that vehicle in that solution. Now, here's something of interest to us. Now, we might be able to see the fact by boosting it, you know, by by zooming in and all that, you can see that this guy's got a cell phone in his hand. But we're sitting here in the moment. We're not under road rage or any of those problems, and so we can see that. Instead, it, when it is actually happening to you, you may not necessarily know exactly what is going on here. And and oh shit, that wasn't a gun. That was a phone all the time. See, it's so dark, you can't even see it. You can't even see it. But damn, same thing. You can say a vehicle is used as a weapon. He stopped your vehicle. The same thing, Peting. Like, this whole... He, he was in the right, bro. He was in the right. You may reasonably think that something bad is happening. And that's what I think goes on here, especially when this guy says, you know I got a pistol, and do you want me to effing shoot you? Friends, with something in his hand like that, making a gesture... Magnet. Hey! Yeah, 100% right. You know I got a pistol. He just told me he got a pistol. Do you want me to shoot you? You just threatened me. You just stopped in front of me. You waving something? Nah. Yeah. 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 Self-defense like a motherfucker. With a raised hand like that, like he's got a gun in his hand, he says, do you know I have a pistol and do you want me to shoot you in this totality of the circumstances? That creates a reasonable objective threat of a deadly threat in this particular instance. So this man is absolutely justified to use deadly force. Now there's an interesting bit here that this is actually an instance here that he had a, a, a reasonable uh, a, 
fear. He had an, a subjective fear of a deadly threat. Well, this guy actually wasn't armed. We know that it was a cell phone in his hand. And he actually didn't have a firearm on him. But given the totality of the circumstances, was it reasonable for the, the self-defender here to believe that he was under a deadly threat? Yes, it was. And therefore, he can use deadly force. And that's exactly what he did. So that's that legal standard. Because even though homeboy tried to use an illusion, the other dude didn't know that. In his mind, he actually got a gun. So, yeah. That's his fault. <laughs> Don't be trying to make an illusion when a nigga actually got a strap on him. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. That's like going and pointing a banana at a dude all in all black. Anything. Like, go and get a BB gun point at a dude who actually got a gun on you. You better pull it because the other dude don't think you about to pull it. He going to shoot you. 100. That's 110%. So, <laughs> May 14, 24, 21, 21, 21. <laughs> There that he was able to, to meet because this guy had the ability, he had the opportunity, and he was in jeopardy of a deadly threat. Now, next, of course, our, our driver here was an excellent marksman. He took one shot, he put that shot in the, in the high center chest, and it was an incapacitating shot, and therefore he stopped shooting. So, having a high level of marksmanship via training, this man was trained, he wasn't just a firearms carrier, he was trained, and he knew exactly what he was doing, and that's incredibly important for all of us as self-defenders to be trained and then that way we can be efficient and effective in that moment next our defender did some <laughs> that's believe i'm gonna be in the fucking shooting range <laughs> the fucking shooting range field if i got to say because i just like i went shooting once and that shit was just cold as fuck <laughs> it just like it was cool as hell my dad looked at me with that crazy eye. I'm like, hey, man, don't worry. Don't worry about what's happening right here. Worry about what's happening at the end of that range. I couldn't shoot shit at first because I didn't have my glasses. First of all, let's get out of the way. I'm blind as hell. So, but now your, your nigga got contacts, okay? We got contacts. <laughs> Other excellent stuff. He cleared the threat, made sure everything was okay, got on the phone with 911. And then if you go read the news story, this defender went way above and beyond and actually rendered first aid to the man who attacked him. Now, I think you need to think about that yourself. I think you got to think long and hard about rendering first aid to somebody who has just been a deadly threat to you because they could reemerge as a threat in that instance. So I would be very cautious of that. This man, having gone through the police academy, might have had a set of handcuffs on him, might have been able to do that from those areas and get him secured. If you don't have that, be very very careful with that. But I do recommend that you keep your first aid kit on you and keep your first aid skills high so that you can protect yourself and your loved ones as well. So this is not a great outcome in the sense of this man was unarmed. He was not armed in that instance. However, totally justified what the defender did here. Interesting for us to think about what is a reasonable, objective, deadly threat in that moment and a reasonable carrying of a firearm, even against a company policy. So some interesting things to think about out of this one. See, so this defender did a fine job knowing what he knew in the moment. He covered his ASP. That was a good little video. Like, like I said before, the illusion shit. That's just stupid. <coughs> and then, oh! He said he was, he said he was drunk too. So you just fucking, you was drinking and driving too? Oh, yeah, that dude was fucked. Even though he, uh, got, he got shot, he got tickets on tickets, and he probably went to jail at the same time. At, damn, dude fucked himself over. <laughs> it's your boy Tox reacting. I'm out of here, man. Ah.